Hi hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please subscribe. If not, and you've already watched my previous video, thank you so much for all the support. Right, so today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Law and Rights. Right, what is a right? So, it's really important for us to grasp what this means fully. Because I, pe I feel people use this word, you know, the word a right. And it's my right, and it's your right, and it's their right. Way too easily without actually grasping and knowing what it means. What is a right, basically. So, it says, how people relate to objects, which is things, and to one another. Every right concerns a relationship made up of two parts, legal subject and object of the right, and legal subject and other legal subjects. A legal relationship is between you, which is the legal subject, and the holder of the right, which is the legal object. Any other people involved are known as other legal subjects. A legal subject is a person who is subject to or under control of the norms of the law who may also be the bearer of rights and duties. Note here, person refers to not only human beings, but associations and bodies of people too. There are two types of persons, natural person and a juristic person. A legal object is anything of economic value, value to someone. And then if you turn to page 26 in your ILW1501 textbook and um, there's a quick explanation or an example that I just want to read quickly for us it says it's about halfway through the page or just before halfway it says let us go into detail first by giving examples I have a right to my car to my book to my services of my employee to the invention which I have patented to delivery of the thing which you have sold me I also have the right against the person who has sold me a car against my employees who must provide me with their services against all others who must respect my rights to my car my book and so forth so this is basically explaining to you what they mean there are four classes of rights in terms of private law so we deal with public law and private law. These are the four classes of rights in terms of private law. We, found, we find out the kind of right by finding out what the object of the right is. So that's really important to know. Real rights. Object, a thing which is a physical thing. Rights of ownership. Owner of a property may freely use and enjoy their property. When you have right of ownership over something, they talk about owner of a property. If you own a house, it is up to you and it's your decision whether you want to sell, whether you want to throw a big party, whether you want to burn the house down, give the house away, whatever. Because you have rights of ownership to this property and you may freely use and enjoy your property. A pledge, which is a movable thing. A security for debt and then we talk about servitude which is right of way one person has been given over the land of another person on page 28 it shows us it talks about real rights and how they can be limited and what they mean by this we have an example um, over here in the middle of the page talks about servitude which we said is a right of way one person has given over the land of another person this entitles the servitude holder to use a road or path through the land of another person her powers which is a content of a right are limited she may only use the owner's land for this purpose and no other purpose thus the servitude holder like the pledgy has a limited right to the property of another. If you are living on a property with someone and they say, um, okay, you can rent the little servants' quarters at the back, 
but we only have one driveway. This is not entitle you to go further than using the driveway. You are only entitled or limited to, should we say, using just the driveway. Then we have personality rights, which is personality property. The right to physical integrity. We have all have the right to our own bodies. You have the right to say whether you whether or not you want someone to touch your body, the right to tattoo your body, the right to do piercings on your body, because you have the right to your own body. The right to your good name, a right to reputation, and the right to your honor. On page 29, it says that these things have no market value, but what gives them value is that they are scarce and not freely obtainable as far as the holder of the right is concerned. Then we have intellectual or immaterial property, which is the creation of human mind. So the right to creation of human mind, example, is a work of art, a trademark or an invention. Immaterial property rights, copyright over what an author has written. This is why when you have a new business idea or something like that, then they always say go and have it patented or go and get copyright over an article or a book that you have written so that without your permission, no one else can use it or sell it as their own because you have intellectual or immaterial property right, the rights to the creation of your human mind. Then we look at personality rights, which is performance, the right to performance, which is a human action, doing or not doing something, actions like delivery or the payment or service, which is also called a claim. So on page 30 in our ILW book, it says to us, right is also called a personal right, because it is a right to performance. In this instant, is the action of not doing something. And then if you turn back to page 29, it says here, yeah, the last paragraph, the action may be the delivery of something by the seller, the payment of the purchase price by the buyer, or the services of the employee. So these are all personal rights. You have the right to deliver something as well as the whoever selling something to you has the right to, to deliver it. Also, you have the right if you're buying something to pay for whatever you purchase and also the services to provide services. We move on to a dual relationship. So a dual relationship is the connection between law and rights, rules of law, legal, legal rules of law that decide what the powers of the holder of a right are, example, the content of the right and what the limits to the content of a right is. All legal subjects have rights and duties and for every right you have a corresponding duty. Thus you can view a nice little diagram which I did not include but the nice little diagram is in our textbook on page 31. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will be posting soon the rest of the units for ILW as well as CMY 1501. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and like and comment on what you are struggling with and what you'd like me to do little videos about. Thank you so much. Bye.